नमस्कार आई एम अंकुर जोशी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट फैकल्टी ऑफ मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज विजडम बनस्थली विद्यापीठ एज अ टीचर वेन वी डिस्कस एनी कॉन्सेप्ट इन द क्लास स्टूडेंट्स आस्क क्वेश्चन लाइक डू दीज थ्योरीज रियली वर्क इन द फील्ड इज दिस एप्लीकेबल इन इंडियन कॉन्टेक्स्ट कुड यू प्लीज शेयर एनी एग्जाम्पल्स एंड इवन इफ स्टूडेंट्स डोंट आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन many a times we feel that the theories and frameworks developed in another socio economic and political scenario are forcefully being fitted into indian organizational scenario and sometimes the consequences may be disastrous many authors have expressed concern over this major problem in academics specifically if we talk about management education there are numerous books research papers and articles that discuss this problem at length for details you can refer to the post colonial literature academic imperialism need for indigenous management etc many a times we have seen that the problem gets discussed at length while lot of time is being wasted in discussing the problem so in this module we will explore two possible ways to address these issues creatively through indigenous approach first is using indigenous content that is theories models frameworks case studies in classroom and second is adopting indigenous research methodology to develop new theories frameworks model case studies etc first let us begin with the usage of indigenous content fortunately management education has been dynamic enough to incorporate the changes in society one of the main reasons for this strength has been the assimilative nature and the foundational ideology of this discipline it could be easily analyzed by observing the evolution of management education over time as a result the authors who brought indigenous perspective to management education did not face that level of resistance as faced by authors in other disciplines management teachers can access books research papers articles case studies and include this in classroom teaching and discussion this approach has been followed by a lot large number of teachers but a lot of work is yet to be done and i am sure the viewers will be more interested in knowing about the second approach that is how to develop new ideas based on indigenous research this is the crucial part of the session wherein we will discuss about the process of developing indigenous theories with contemporary relevance before describing the process let us make it clear that it is not a rigid structure of do's and don'ts one is always encouraged to improvise and make it more relevant if the participants wish they can discuss this over email so let's begin step 1 have a sound and in depth understanding of existing theories and concepts of the domain in which one aims to develop the indigenous knowledge remember one has moral rights to critique only after a thorough study else it becomes mere criticism step 2 start reading literature that critique the existing theories with strong logic and rationale post modernist studies would be good to start with some of the seminal works in this area are being different by rajiv malhotra decolonizing hindu mind by coenrad elst oxford handbook of post colonial studies works of dharampal a great gandhian scholar and many more the above two steps will lay strong foundations for the researcher and also help in identifying a meaningful research potential or gap now in the third step one needs not only to shift gears but also make some lifestyle changes so step 3 read literature scriptures with indigenous content a parallel step of internalizing culture should begin there is a very famous sanskrit saying gyanam bharah kriyam vina that is knowledge becomes a burden without application this is reason for suggesting lifestyle changes bharatiya scriptures and knowledge do not simply happen over coffee 
listen to this beautiful explanation by Professor Harsh Purohit on maintaining Satvikta for acquiring knowledge. Take Shastra as a reference and uh, before Shastrarth, the participants should discuss with each other uh, about what each aims to cover. Coming to the fourth point, the arguments are logical and backed up with contents of Shastra. So, finally, uh, Satvikta in organizing the venue, making the start and end of the program make Shastrarth quite unique. Hope you found it interesting. Because of the colonial model of education that our country continued even after independence, there are various apprehensions and misconceptions about our scriptures. It is recommended that the researcher tries to overcome colonial bias and then takes an indigenous epistemological stance to learn ancient wisdom. Some examples of the scriptures that can be referred are Ramayana, all versions like Valmiki Ramayana, Ramcharit Manas and others, Mahabharat, especially the part of Bhagavad Gita, Puran, which are 18 in number, one can select on basis of his or her own interest, Upanishad, which are 108 in number, consisting of stories and discussions which enrich the understanding of key concepts. Darshan Shastra like Yoga, Sankh, Mimansa, Tark, etc. Panchatantra, which helps in understanding Niti Shastra through stories and tales. Then we have Kotilya Artha Shastra, in which there are many various ideas regarding administration, management, and governance. Then we have ideas in various folklore, bhajans, etc. Then one can refer the contemporary visionaries like Swami Vivekananda. First content, in Gurukul the content is broadly divided into four categories. First is Ved, Vedang and Shruti, Darshan Shastra, Niti Shastra, Dharm Shastra, Smriti Granth and fourth is Itihas and Puran. First, we will talk about Ved. Ved are also known as Shruti and are the fundamental knowledge and the first ever sound generated leading to the origin of universe. Vedang, as the name suggests, these are Jyotish, Chand, Kalp, Nirukt, Vyakran and Shiksha. Moving further to Darshan Shastra, it is said that Drishyate Anen Iti Darshanam, meaning something that throws light on the phenomena and the knowledge gets revealed. There are numerous darshans which were developed by rishis, munis, thinkers and philosophers over the time. The difference in process is what makes them appear different and this has been highlighted and evangelized by many endologists. But rarely do they draw the reader's attention to the fact that the conclusion of all darshan is same. Such a large number of darshans and the conclusions converge. I am eager to know that. Yes, initially I was also surprised to see that Nyay, Vaisheshik, Yog, Mimamsa, Sankhya and other even some of the narcissistic darshan, they conclude or, uh, or converge at the same point. But then I realized uh, by reading a book and it where it was mentioned that jis buddhi ko bhagwan ne banaya vah buddhi bhagwan ko kaise janegi. This was an interesting point and uh, I would deliberately not choose to uh, elaborate much and leave up to the audience to ponder over it. Third comes Niti Shastra and Dharma Shastra. These are the scriptures which contain details of conduct, roles and responsibilities of people in public life, in professional life and personal lives. These may include more than 45 Smriti Granths like Manu Smriti, Yagyavalk Smriti, etc. Niti Shastra includes works like Vidur Niti, Chanakya Niti, Panchatantra. Now, third, the most interesting and one of my favorites that is Itihas and Puran. 
the knowledge contained in above three types of sources is humongous and thus it becomes difficult for a person to comprehend but education and knowledge should be for all thus with this purpose rishi valmiki composed ramayan and maharshi vyas compiled mahabharat and puran these carry same knowledge as contained in ved vedang dharm shastra niti shastra etc but in a simpler language and in form of stories metaphors and analogies the above list is just a suggestive one in bharat there are numerous works available for exploring indigenous knowledge geeta press gorakhpur one of the premier publishing houses of bharat has published most of the above mentioned scriptures and are available at very nominal price step 4 based on the above processes one starts getting ideas for contemplation and reflection this is an iterative process step 5 now with the passage of time one is ready for discussion with like minded people experts etc this process helps researcher to develop a holistic understanding step 6 Finally the researcher gets grounded in indigenous phenomena the above process has been reflected in the work of professor subhash sharma when he calls it in western windows and eastern doors that is the eastern approach to knowledge seeking is about entering the phenomena and experiencing it from within self realization is very important aspect of this learning phase Rajiv Malhotra discussed the idea of embodied knowing wherein person becomes one with the knowledge Professor Sharda Nandram and Dr Punit Bindlish developed an idea of integrative intelligence which is also based on same concept To sum up all three gyata gyan gye that is the knower the knowledge and the known become one in this process A beautiful shlok that explains this learning cycle goes like acharyat padam adatte padam shishya swamedhaya padam sa brahmacharibhya padam kalakramena cha meaning knowledge acquisition takes place through four channels which are learning from acharya self study peer learning and self experience step 7 above steps need iteration depending upon depth the researcher wishes to achieve and persistence he or she has step 8 the researcher is ready for academic output that is grounded in indigenous system and has contemporary relevance there are two very robust frameworks for sharing the knowledge output with academic community and students one is fundamental tenets of darshan shastra that is he he hetu han and hanopai other is from nyay shastra called avayav now let us explore some guidelines and framework from nyay shastra which is a wonderful framework to express the points effectively to enrich the discussion the participants can present their view by incorporating this five dimensions for a good discussion these are also known as avayav the five dimensions are first pratigya this is the point which one wants to convey second is the reason or the rationale behind that third is the example to substantiate the point that a person wants to explain fourth is called the upanaya which is the relation or the analogy of a point reason and the example and finally the nigaman that is the concluding sentence for example we suggest shastra as a pedagogy of learning it is the point because of its integrative approach the reason for example if we saw a case of acharya bandi and ashtavakra this is an example which was also an integrative approach this is upnay therefore management teachers can adopt this practice for enriching the management education so here we conclude the module by inviting researchers to explore the world of bharti ethos indigenous systems scriptures and grassroots wisdom to gain 
insights of management and share it with the students. Viewers can share their concerns, ideas, suggestions or any feedback with us through email. Namaskar.